Hey everybody, welcome back. It's your AP Bio teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we are getting into 1.3, topic 1.3, Introduction to Biological Macromolecules. We're continuing our unit on the chemistry of life in AP Biology. So what we're going to get into today are how these big old molecules, macromolecules, are able to form, how they're able to break apart. Um, and it requires a series of chemical reactions here that we'll go over the basics of. All right, um, so as I've alluded to before, uh, we have four main classes of biomolecules. We talked about this in the last lesson. Uh, there's carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. So those four biomolecules, we call them macromolecules as opposed to micromolecules. Macro means they're big as far as molecules go. You know, molecules are still pretty small, but these are the biggest ones that you can find, or the big uh, macromolecules that are found in living things, particularly proteins. They're huge. Right? Um, so, four main classes of biomolecules, um, they're able to form really big molecules from smaller pieces th uh, through some of the processes that we'll talk about in this lesson here today. Um, so, complex carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleic acids, they're very, very big molecules. Um, they are called polymers, and you might have heard of this word before. Polymers are long molecules, that should have an S there, made of many building blocks linked by covalent bonds. Um, so let's just say, check this out, this is, a, this is a protein, or the start of a protein. This is a, um, what is that called, primary level protein. We have a chain of five different amino acids here. That is, by definition, a polymer. Poly, P-O-L-Y, that prefix means many. So we have, we have many different individual links that are, you know, make this chain of this protein. Okay, carbohydrates can work in the same way. You can have a, lots of different what are called monosaccharides and build them up into a polysaccharide. Um, so mono means one, poly means many. Um, so proteins and carbohydrates and nucleic acids, nucleic acids is a really long chain of little monomers called nucleotides. Okay, so as I've already kind of alluded to here, I'm going to put my face over here. Um, the building blocks themselves of these polymers, they are called monomers, mono meaning one. Um, so if we were to break all of these bonds, all of these covalent bonds between these amino acids, we could get these individual building blocks that are called monomers. So many monomers make up a polymer. All right, so what we're going to talk about in this lesson is how are monomers able to form polymers and how are polymers able to be broken down back into monomers or maybe bigger polymers are made into smaller polymers or something like that. All right, so monomers form polymers, and we're going to be talking about the monomers of carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. We're going to be talking about what they are as polymers um, later on in this unit as well. Okay, but the focus for today is how do they, they become bigger, how do they become polymers, and how do they become smaller or monomers. And there's two main processes that I'm going to be asking you to know. I'm going to be referring to them a lot uh, throughout this year. So monomers and smaller polymers can link together to form bigger polymers through what, a process called dehydration synthesis. And you think like, oh, if it's dehydrated, that's it's probably being broken down, right? Because it's bad to be dehydrated. Well, not exactly. Um, but yeah, that's how you build molecules. And hydrolysis is the process through which bigger polymers can break down into smaller polymers or back into their monomers. That's, yeah, that's hydrolysis. I it was about to read that again. Uh, but this is supposed to be an arrow here. I don't know why that's, that's showing that. But check it out. Dehydration synthesis takes these monomers and makes them into a polymer. And hydrolysis is able to take this polymer and put them back into monomers. All right, so let's discuss how this exactly works. So dehydration synthesis, um, this is a process through which a new covalent bond forms through the loss of a water molecule. So how does losing a water molecule help us build a bigger molecule? Let's find out. Um, one of these polymers here tends to have an H at the end of it right here. So take, check out this picture over here. We got two glucose molecules, and if we bind them together, it makes a maltose molecule, uh, which is actually what's called a dimer because it has two uh, monomers. But anyway, um, one, don one group donates what's called a, just like an H group or a hydroxyl group, and then, or this is, excuse me, this is a hydronyl group, and this is a hydroxyl group. You don't have to memorize all the functional names. I'm just saying them because I'm trying to remember them um, from when I learned them. Um, but one group gives an H, the other group is an OH, and what do you get when you have two H's and an O? Well, you get a water molecule from it. 
Okay, so um, if both of these polymers lose an H and an OH, what happens is it forms H2O as a molecule. And what, what happens then, instead of these bonds, uh, these polymers bonding to this H and to this OH, they end up bonding to each other. Okay, so they form this polymer, um, and a new covalent bond forms between these two, uh, these two polymers. Okay, so we got rid of this H and of this OH to form a water molecule, so that's why it's called dehydration. We're taking a water molecule from it to form a new covalent bond between those two uh, polymers. And this is something that we're going to be practicing a lot in class. We're going to model it together, so hooray. Um, so yeah, that is dehydration synthesis. We're taking two smaller pieces and making a bigger one by taking away a water molecule, forming a new covalent bond between the two. Okay, hydrolysis is exactly the opposite, believe it or not. Hydrolysis breaks the covalent bond by adding a water molecule to um, a polymer. So the hydrolysis is going, is going to make a polymer into smaller polymers or into monomers. Um, by adding a water molecule and forcing an H group and an OH group on either side of that, uh, of that covalent bond. All right, so pretend this water molecule goes and kind of attacks this bond here. Uh, what's going to happen, as you can see from this picture, this is the opposite of what's happening in the other picture. This is maltose breaking down into two glucose molecules. Um, it forms an OH on one side and an H on the other. Okay, so instead of a polymer here, we got a new H group and a new OH group on either one of these other polymers to make it to make it smaller, to break that covalent bond, and that is called hydrolysis. Lysis, that uh, Greek suffix, I want to say Greek, means to break, and hydro means water, so to break with water. Okay, so water, again, it's an amazing molecule, can end up um, breaking down these large polymers as well. Okay, so just as an example here, let's just say I have a lot of glycogen stored up. If you ever carbocrammed um, for a cross-country meet or a track meet or something for it, see, look, I ran, I ran track in college, so we'd had a lot of carbocrams. The idea of a carbocram or a carbo load, um, as, they call, as they're called, is to build as many complex carbohydrates in your muscles as possible and it forms a molecule called glycogen. Okay, so and glycogen is a complex carbohydrate, and you take a bunch of glucose molecules and you make a really, 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 really long string of them. And what happens is your muscles are able to store them. Okay, so by eating a bunch of carbs, eating a bunch of, taking in a bunch of glucose through your, through your garlic bread and pasta and stuff, okay, you're allowing your muscles to undergo dehydration synthesis and build these big old molecules so that you can use them for later. Okay. The opposite of which, when it's race time, when it's ready to go, you want that energy that you stored up through your carbocram, right? So what's going to happen in your muscles is that hydrolysis is going to occur and break down those chains of those, um, those it's called glycogen, so that we can get each individual glucose molecule and then we can use that for energy. All right? So that is dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis. Those are di the difference between the two, and that's 1.3. Please let me know if you have any questions. We'll see you next time.